Hi everyone, comic book reviewer here. This time, reviewing on Peter Rabbit 2, The Runaway. Now, as you know, Peter Rabbit 2, The Runaway, is a 2021 live-action computer animated adventure comedy film that was meant to be a sequel to the 2018 film, Peter Rabbit, that I did cover. Now, mostly because of numerous delays due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the film was eventually released in 2021. And the premise of the film takes place sometime after the first film, where we see how Thomas and B end up getting married, and we kind of see how B kind of works on her own book about Peter Rabbit and his friends. And over the course of the film, we see how Peter is kind of made as the bad guy in, in the series. And you can kind of tell does get annoyed that he's being made as kind of this bad influence like character. And we also do kind of see how a book publishing company run by Nigel Basil Jones is interested in B's book. Now, I wouldn't really call Nigel a major bad guy. Again, he runs a book company. He's taking ideas to kind of alter the book to appeal to kids. And for someone who has a father who works at Shark Ninja, you can kind of tell Nigel is trying to keep things updated for kids, trying to sort of give kids what they want. And yeah, you can kind of tell Thomas does have mixed feelings about this, and you can tell isn't really pleased of Nigel's influence on B, despite Nigel is trying to kind of help B keep up to date with the kids. And I think what's interesting is we do kind of see how Peter ends up meeting a sort of old rabbit who claims to be Peter's father's friend, known as Bannibals. And we kind of see how they do end up bonding and do plan for this big heist. But of course, there is more truths about this heist than there is. And you know they're going to go with the whole big reveal twist story. And it's a, and pretty much we do kind of see how Peter, Thomas, and B try to help fix the problem. I would say the film, in my opinion, is a shallow version of the first film. I think the first film worked because it did show you Peter Rabbit it was able to kind of redeem himself. The same with Thomas. We did kind of see how they were able to kind of fix their mistakes. I think here it's similar to the first film, but it really doesn't really add anything new. It's just a copy and paste version of the first film. And I kind of think them going out to rescue of all of Peter's friends in a kind of Mission Impossible-like style just feels a little enforced. I think there was intentions to make a good Peter Rabbit film, and even in one of the trailers, they seemed to suggest they were going to do something different until being changed. I think the point about doing a sequel is you want to sort of show what happens next, what the next story is meant to tell. I think what the Star Wars prequels got right is showing Anakin's rise and downfall. I also think what the Alien films got right at was showing you that the Alien would always come back in Ripley's life. And it's also kind of like Le also looking at, at say, the Spider-Man movies. Peter would always have a threat to deal with that's meant to be a represent of something from his past. I think Peter Rabbit is like a toned down, watered down version of the first film. It's kind of a pointless sequel that really didn't need to be made. I felt the first film ended things perfectly, and I'm hoping with the third film they're going to do, I'm hoping it's not going to be mediocre, wasted, and boring like this one. So I think this film definitely deserves a thumbs down. It's not really a great sequel, and it's definitely a pointless one at that. So, comic reviewer here, signing out.